श्री शरद पवार जी ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर एग्रीकल्चर एंड फूड प्रोसेसिंग श्री हरीश रावत मिनिस्टर ऑफ वाटर रिसोर्सेस श्री श्रीकांत कुमार जैना मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट फॉर एग्रीकल केमिकल्स एंड फर्टिलाइजर्स श्री राजीव श्रॉफ चेयरमैन क्रॉप केयर फेडरेशन ऑफ इंडिया डॉक्टर आयप्पन डायरेक्टर जनरल आई श्री नादिर गजरेज चेयरमैन गडरेज एग्रोफेट लिमिटेड राजू बाडवाला मैनेजिंग डायरेक्टर महाराष्ट्र हाइब्रिड सीड्स कंपनी डॉक्टर कल्याण बैनर्जी फॉर्मर प्रेसिडेंट रोटरी इंटरनेशनल डिस्टिंग्विश पार्टिसिपेंट्स लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन इट गिव्स मी मेन्स प्लेजर टू बी हियर टू डे टू इनोगेट द नेशनल कॉन्फ्रेंस on doubling india's food production in the next 5 years being organized by the ministry of agriculture and the crop care foundation of india i am glad to be present here amidst the distinguished participants which has set a very high ambitious target before us but i am confident as the indian farmers took the challenges in most critical time and equally confident that sri sharad pawar who has led agriculture sector in the union government for the last 8 years very successfully and gave us the prestige of entering into the unique distinction recognized by ed India being the largest rice producer covering more than 100 million so however daunting the task may appear to be i am confident both the indian farmers and agriculture minister will come up to the task in the context of pursuing inclusive economic growth it is of primary essence to achieve the interdependent objectives of poverty alleviation mitigation of food inadequacy creation of rural employment and growth in rural incomes substantial expansion in the country's food production will greatly facilitate in meeting these objectives the subject matter of this conference is therefore apt and i applaud the efforts of the organizers to bring an issue of topical importance to the forefront of the national policy discourse distinguished participants ladies and gentlemen a country's development is dependent on the productivity of its people unless the health of our population is secured we may not be able to realize the progress that we have envisaged for our nation with a growing population the challenge before us is not only to ensure that the indicators of food security do not deteriorate but instead show improvement food production therefore deserves high priority in our national policy formulation food deprivation cannot be allowed to continue steps are required to secure for the poor and the needy greater access to food our democracy is committed to ensuring for all its citizens social economic and political justice we have relied on a rights based method and empowered our citizens with legal entitlements the landmark mahatma gandhi national rural employment guarantee act of 2005 is one such example i'm hopeful of the proposed legislation for provision of food security to our people becoming a reality very soon ladies and gentlemen in terms of growth india's agricultural sector has lagged behind the other sectors of the economy contribution of agriculture to the country's national income has therefore declined over time from about 23% in 
during the ninth five-year plan, the share of this sector has come down to about 15 percent during the eleventh plan. Yet, in a country with one-third of the rural population below poverty line, the potential of the agriculture sector for rural rejuvenation cannot be undermined. About a half of our country's population depends on agriculture for livelihood. Some studies have indicated that one percentage growth in agriculture sector is two to three times more effective in reducing poverty than one percentage growth in other sectors. The growth of agriculture and allied sectors decreased from 7% in 2010-11 to 2.8% in 11-12 and to 2.1% in the first half of the current financial year. This deceleration is perhaps reflective of the challenging economic scenario, but I am confident of this situation being reversed quickly. Agriculture ought to be an effective agent of the change in rural India. We have envisaged the agriculture sector to grow at a 4% per annum during the 12th five-year plan. The agricultural growth in the 11th plan period was mainly due to the improved agricultural prices and again thanks to the agriculture minister because of his persistent pressure in the union cabinet decision-making process we could do justice to our farmers. As demand for major crops are projected slowdown during the 12th plan period, we'll have to rely primarily on productivity gains to attain the target of growth. Ladies and gentlemen, the eastern region of our country is bestowed with abundant natural resources and has the potential to achieve much higher crop productivity. At the same time, Rice production in agriculturally advanced areas of northwestern India is becoming unsustainable due to overexploitation of the natural resources like land and water. We have devised a strategy of increasing the production and productivity in the eastern region to ensure food security while reducing pressures on the northeastern region. To achieve this objective, a four-pronged strategy was delineated as part of the Union budget for 2010-11, covering agricultural production, reduction in wastage, credit support, and thrust to food processing sector in order to spur inclusive growth, enhance rural income, and sustain food security. As part of this strategy, it was decided to implement Bringing Green Revolution to Eastern India, program under the Rashtriya Krishi Vikas Yojana in Assam, Bihar, Jharkhand, Eastern Uttar Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Orisha, and West Bengal. To address issues of rice based cropping system in these states, with an outlay of Rs. 400 crore each in 2010 11, 11 12, and Rs. 1000 crore in 2012 13. As a result of these initiatives, Farmers in the selected clusters have adopted good agricultural practices like use of drum seeders, indirect seeded rice, line sowing, system of rice identification, improved flash flood tolerant and drought tolerant varieties of rice, and have gained from the yield advantage of the hybrid rice technology. I am told that the sustained efforts of the past three years have produced very encouraging outcomes in terms of significant increase in the share of the eastern region in the total rice production in the country. Of the total rice production of 104 million tons in the country in 2011-12, a record production of 55 million tons of rice was contributed by the eastern region. I am happy to note that a committee has been constituted under the chairmanship of the Union Agriculture Minister with the Chief Ministers of the Bringing Green Revolution to Eastern India States to provide Philip to the implementation of the program. I am told that this committee 
has decided to focus on procurement of rice during the 2012-13 besides ensuring timely availability of credit facilities to poor farmers. It is gratifying to note that an apex committee on agriculture for Eastern India has been constituted under the chairmanship of Prime Minister to provide impetus to the ongoing efforts for agricultural development in that region. I am confident that this would provide the line departments such as power, irrigation, finance, fertilizer, marketing and cooperatives a forum to cover <coughs> coverage the activities of identified clusters so as to achieve integrated delivery of service to the farmers. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, we would place great emphasis on the productivity driving measures such as diversification of crops improvement in seed replacement rate, adoption of the high yielding hybrid seeds and improvement in water management practices. India is one of the leaders of the information and communication technology revolution. We must resort to greater use of the satellite communications for weather forecasting and to information technology for this effective dissemination to the farming community. In addition to these steps for prevention of the crop failure, we must strengthen mechanisms such as agricultural insurance to manage the risk of crop failure due to natural calamities, pests and disease. Green revolution in the 60s brought about a considerable rise in the food production, but the disproportionate use of the chemical fertilizers eventually led to a decline in the food gain productivity. The need for the balanced use of fertilizers and pesticides should be propagated amongst the farming community through agricultural education and extension programs. First green revolution was restricted in terms of geography. We should assert in the second green revolution that is widespread and which touched all arable land in the country. Distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, total food grain production of the country increased by 12 million tons in 2011-12 from 245 million tons in the previous year. In 2012-13, the food grain production in the Kharif season is estimated at 117 million tons which is lower than 130 million tons of the food production of the previous Kharif season. In the context of the current production levels, doubling food production in the next five years will be a great challenge and test for our capacity to successfully employ all possible growth-inducing growth measures. Quantum jump in food production will have several positive spin-offs. It will drive investment in infrastructure for storage, processing, transportation, and packaging. It will also boost the prospects of the agro-processing industry. It will create jobs in the rural sector. Capacity building of our rural youth should therefore go hand in hand. Better livelihood opportunities in rural areas will reduce the pressure of migration from urban, for urban centers. Growth in food production will also help in conservation of the natural resources. With the technologies at our disposal, it will be possible to utilize farm waste from the increased food production as feed for livestock, livestock and aquaculture. This will reduce pressure on the forest lands which are currently used as pastures for grazing animals. Doubling the country's food production is an imperative that we cannot ignore. It will be possible to arrive at ways and means of achieving this fiat only through the extensive consultations. I congratulate the Minister of Agriculture and CCFI for providing a platform to facilitate a greater understanding of this issue by all stakeholders concerned. I am hopeful of a meaningful discussions in your conference emanating from the deliberation. I wish the organizers all success your conference 
गॉड स्पीड थैंक यू लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन फॉर द पेशेंस जय हिंद